Hello, my name is Tony Botting and I'm a simulation specialist at Go Engineer. In this video we show how to couple a thermal analysis to a thermal structural analysis. Here's a list of things to do. First, complete the thermal analyses. Next, set up the structural analysis. Adjust the properties of the structural analysis to include the temperatures from the thermal analysis. Set the zero strain temperature. This is the reference point for no thermally induced strain. Then run the thermal structural analysis. As an example, this hot oil radiator is mounted on two angle iron columns. If the heat loss from the radiator increases the temperature of the columns high enough, the columns can bend. This is a thermally induced strain condition which can cause thermal stresses at the fixtures. The thermally induced strain is calculated at a point in the structure from this equation where alpha is the coefficient of thermal expansion of the material. T is the temperature of the material at that location in the structure and T reference is the zero strain temperature. For example, suppose we have alpha equal to 7.22 e to the minus 6 per degree F. Assume the zero strain temperature is 75 degrees F and the temperature of the material is 375 degrees F. The difference in temperatures is 300 degrees. In this case, the thermal strain at that location in the structure would be 7.22 e to the minus 6 times 300, which equals 0 0.00217. The raw units can be taken as inches per inch. To get the length change due to thermal expansion, you can multiply by the length over which the change in temperature is 300 degrees. If the length is 30 inches, then the thermally induced expansion is 0 0.00217 times 30, which equals 0 0.065 inches. If the structure is fixed at both ends, it certainly will experience a thermally induced stress and it might try to bend out of shape. To demonstrate this behavior, first we conduct the thermal analysis. We suppress the radiator, so heat loss from the radiator in the form of power is applied to contact areas of the columns. Heat loss from all other column faces is assumed natural convection to air at 75 degrees F. The thermal analysis results show the temperature distribution at steady state. You can observe radiator contact areas on the columns are about 250 degrees. Now we need to determine the effect on the structure. We'll create a static simulation to include the thermal effect. And we'll apply some fixtures to the ends of each column. Now we'll access the properties of the study. Go to the Flow Thermal Effects tab and select the option for Temperatures from Thermal Study. In the drop down, you can choose the thermal study name. Set the reference temperature at zero strain. The external loads icon will indicate that you've added a thermal study to the analysis. Here's the results of the thermally induced deformations. You can see the columns bending and the resultant deflection is about 19 thousandths of an inch. This next image shows thermally induced stresses due to the end restraints on the columns. In this video, we showed how to couple a thermal analysis to a thermal structural analysis. Set up and run the thermal analyses. Set up the structural analysis. Adjust the properties of the structural analysis to include the temperatures from the thermal analysis. Set the zero strain temperature. Then run the thermal structural analysis.